Welcome back to the channel, everyone. You are watching the Q&A session for the Mission Across Wales, the question and answer session. This is where you get to find out everything there is to know, pretty much about the uh, Mission Across Wales, the thought process, how I felt at the time, and how I felt afterwards, uh, and much more. We'll start with the more tame, placid ones, and we'll move on to some juicy ones. We'll start with these three from Pat Zar. What is your day job if you have one? Well, I no longer have a job. My job is now YouTube. Uh, my most recent job was a van driver, uh, which was a good job. I was driving a van for an insurance salvage company all around the UK, uh, and I liked it. It was a cushy job, um, but I had to. I had to leave it to pursue YouTube. There was just too much editing to do. I'm afraid. What would you be doing if not for YouTube? Well, I guess I'd still be driving a van. And what did you expect to do while you were in school? I didn't have the faintest idea what I wanted to do in school, to be honest with you. Um, I didn't take geography for GCSE, some of you will be shocked to know. Um, but I did do alright in my GCSEs, but by the time I got to my A-levels, I didn't care. Uh, I didn't know what I was going to do, so I didn't go to university. I guess I just thought life would work itself out. That's how naive I was. Um, but eventually it did, so the joke's on them. What inspired you or how did you come up with the idea of the mission across Wales? Well, Robot Man, the foundations for the mission across Wales, I think, were laid years ago uh, when me and my stepbrother, Greg, uh, who you will see very soon, of course, uh, used to just mission our way, as we used to call it, through the countryside of Staffordshire, uh, hopping fences, wading through rivers uh, and escaping farmers. And I think if it wasn't for my or our love of these mischievous sort of adventures, um, then I don't think that all these years later I would have even dreamt it possible or even suspected it was possible or even wanted to do it for that matter. But then that lust for adventure stayed with me, of course, through my 20s. I went on several adventures. But uh, last year I found myself wanting to do something different, something that hadn't been done. And because I'm not a serious adventurer, okay, like Bear Grylls, although sometimes I do sound like him, um, you know, I can't just go off and climb up the sheer face of a, a Himalayan ice giant or cross the Amazon by foot. You know, I can't, I would die, right? And everything else, it seems, has, has kind of been done, you know? People have walked, cycled, driven, across every continent, even around the world. People have walked around the world. Uh, people have gone from Land's End to John O'Groats on a bloody unicycle, right? So what can I do that hasn't been done? Well, has anyone walked across a country in a straight line? Has anyone actually been mad enough to do that? No. So why not hone my hedge hopping skills that I've built up in my youth and do something that's never been done before in the process? What did your GF and parents say when you told them about the mission across Wales? Smiley face, smiley face. Ah, uh, my girlfriend and parents were sceptical. They were a bit sceptical. They just thought, well, like most people, what, why, why, Tom? Why would you want to do that? Is that possible? Are you going to die? That's probably what they were thinking. And they took some persuading. Ultimately, they were on board. They didn't try and stop me, but they were just like, really? Especially my girlfriend, Verity, bless her. She was just like, are you sure? Uh, a bit tentative, but only worried about my safety. Um, but I, I, I won them round. I won them round in the end. Friends? Slightly different. Some of them were like, mate, that's amazing. Those guys who knew me and knew adventure a bit better, they were like, that's incredible, mate. I can't wait to see that. Other ones, work colleagues were like, again, why, Tom? Why choose to do the mission in winter? I mean, it's Wales. In winter. Joseph, it's a sterling question, and it's one that many people have asked, but the, the answer is simple. In the summer, you've got stingy nettles, you've got bramble. You think you saw brambles in the winter. They were just starting to grow, okay? In the summer, they are gargantuan. They're Jurassic in size, and the thorns grow with them, okay? They're, they're, they're awful things. Um... And on top of that, you've got midges, flies, insects that bite you. They, they, they eat me alive, to be honest. And then hay fever. I suffer terrible with hay fever, annoyingly, because I'm such an outdoorsy person. Um, the heat, you can deal with. That, that's, it's, it's the foliage, the impassable, impenetrable 
scratchy, thorny foliage that just would have made it hellish and impossible. In the winter, yes, it's cold. Yes, it's wet, but at least you can get through that shit. So that's why. Had you done any survival training or research before heading out on your trip? The fact you didn't bring a first aid kit or gloves did make me wonder this. It's a very good question, Mango. Um, the answer is no. I mean, I haven't done any survival training. Um, I'm not a qualified mountain leader or anything like that. So no, um, is, is the answer to your question. But, and this is a big but now, because this is important, because a lot of people, a lot, a lot of young lads might try and copy me. Some of you watching might be thinking of copying me, doing something similar to what I did. Um, all I'll say is this, I do have a fair amount of experience in the mountains, hiking, navigating, camping, anything to do with that, okay? I've got enough experience and a good head on my shoulders to know what is doable, what isn't, and what are the potential risks? Is it too slippy? Is there too much wind? Is it going to be dark soon? Should I be heading? You know, all of these things that a youngster might not consider because they just haven't got enough years behind them, I have got. So to any youngsters thinking they can just go out there and do what I've done without any consequences, well, there will be consequences uh, if you don't know what you're doing. In terms of the first aid kit, I mean, yeah, I should have took one. I should have definitely took one, clearly, because I, I cut my hand open. I guess I was just trying to make more space in my backpack, which is ridiculous, because uh, it's nothing, is it? Uh, and I guess I just thought, I'm not going to cut myself, and that's that. But I did. So definitely take a first aid kit, kids, and uh, again, don't copy me. Other than having a pub at the end, what were your priorities when selecting a line? What did you primarily want to avoid? Mr. Birdie, that's a good question. <laughs> the pub at the end was, was key. No, it, it wasn't, to be honest. It just so happened to be there. Uh, the line was tweaked a fair bit. I did a lot of tweaking. I did do a lot of tweaking on Google Earth. Uh, first and foremost, you've got to avoid any sort of village because that means multiple houses, you know? Like, how are you going to get through a row of houses with back gardens? You ain't going to do it uh, without permission. Um, you've got to avoid the worst of the mountains, which I didn't do in the end. Um, and you've got to try and avoid as many farms as possible. I mean, yes, I went through about four or five or six farms, but they just weren't avoidable. The, the main things you want to avoid, treacherous mountains, villages, farms. On a scale of one to ten, how scared were you in the case of bumping into an angry farmer? Thank you for your question, Daryl. This Daryl? Darren. <laughs> uh, this is another common one in the comments, isn't it? Okay, let's clear this up once and for all. The farmers themselves, five out of 10. Failing the mission, 10 out of 10. That would be my simplest answer. Let me explain a bit further. Yes, some farmers are scary, okay? There can be, especially the older ones, the more old school sort of traditional guys they don't want people on their land, young whippersnappers like me. They might be hostile. They might swear at me. They might even threaten to set their dogs on me. Okay, whatever, right? Uh, on the other hand, you might get a, a younger, more reasonable farmer, a bit more friendly. Either way, farmers mean failure because it's only going to end in one thing. The farmer will end up escorting you off their land to the entrance or an entrance of their land. Now, that entrance might be 200 meters over to my left, it might be a kilometer over to my right, or it might be two kilometers back the way I came. I don't know why I'm using kilometers here. Either way, right, that's failure. Two kilometers back the way I came, absolute failure. Game over, mate, you know? And the long and short of it is, they're not going to let me climb over their, their hedgerows, you know? They, even the nicest farmer. Okay, one in 10 farmers might let me do that. And that's a very conservative estimate. Um, so I've got to presume that I'm going to come across the other nine out of ten farmers. So I can't risk just waltzing across the, the land without a care in the world. I had to make myself as hidden as possible. So the farmers themselves, five. I mean, dogs, ten, to be honest. Dogs are scary, right? They can bite you. Um, farmers are not going to shoot you. But failing the mission, 
10 out of 10. That's why I was so paranoid all the time. And that's why I was so terrified of farmers. Hope that clears it up, Daryl. Darren! Did the possibility of death ever scare you at all? Or did you feel safe for your entire journey across Wales? Well, Willie, uh, yes, it did. I'm afraid the possibility of death <laughs> was a very real thing. Um, at the river, crossing the river, that's why I didn't cross it, because the possibility of death scared me. Crossing on the Rotten Bridge, yep, if I'd have fallen in, if it had collapsed, I probably would have drowned in my heavy boots, clothes and bag. Uh, kayaking across Lake Vernwy, yep. Um, gust of wind, big wave, eye cap size, the boat floats away, drowned <laughs> in an icy abyss. Uh, possibly, you know, slim chance probably, but I didn't know that. Uh, scrambling up the, the mossy cliffside, yeah. So to sum up, yes, the possibility of death was there. I like to think I steered clear of um, situations where it, it really was strong, as I said before. But yeah, I mean, if, if you're not scared of it, then you're doing something wrong. So you've got to always be scared of the possibility of death. It's a morbid subject. Can we move on? What was your plan for actions if you get caught while trespassing? How would you deal with police, arrest, etc.? How would you handle aggression of the owner? Would you rather fight back or run? If peaceful outcome is impossible, what was your plan for encounters with guarding dogs and wild animals? At which point would you hurt them? What weapons did you carry for self-defense? Did you have pepper spray with you? Uh, no, I would never fight back with a farmer. I would have been totally respectful and said, uh, I, I would have tried to persuade him to just let me carry on. Um, I would have offered him money, to be honest. I would have bribed farmers. I had some £10 notes in my pocket, which are waterproof now. Um, and actually, I would have I would have ran if they, you know, said no. And I thought I had a good escape route. I would have ran, to be honest. But if, if they did apprehend me and there was no way out, I would have been totally respectful. I would have held my hands up and that's it. Dogs. I did think about getting some pepper spray uh, for dogs, but I thought against it. I, I don't think that's fair to pepper spray a dog, really. He's just doing his job. Uh, guarding his farm. Uh, plus, you can't buy it on the internet. I tried. Did you expect to encounter more people on your trip? Was you disappointed you didn't see more people or have more interactions? Yes, I did expect to encounter more people. Um, but that wouldn't have been a good thing, necessarily. I mean, my mindset was the, the, the less people I can encounter, the better. Because that, in my head, meant a confrontation, most likely with a farmer, uh, which would have been bad. That would have, as I said, more, most likely spelt game over. Looking back, though, I am kind of disappointed that I didn't have more situations where a farmer did spot me, but I got away. I mean, if you remember that builder's yard at the end, I was dying by that point for a farmer or a bloke who worked there to, to spot me and go, I and chase me. I really wanted that. It would have been good for footage, for the story, for everything. So yeah, it's an interesting one. It's a fine line. Ideally, I want close calls. I don't want actual confrontations. So overall, I think I've got to, I've got to count my lucky blessings that I didn't have the confrontations because that allowed me to, to get through Wales unscathed for the most part. What was the first moment you had the actual thought, what the fuck am I doing? Not just saying it as a joke, the moment you realized it's smiley face. To be perfectly honest, mate, the first field. I, I could make a case for that, but for the argument of the answer, the river, which was pretty early on, um, the river. When I approached it, I th thought, what am I doing? Especially when I'd stripped off and started to wade into it. That was your question personified. You know, what the fuck am I doing? Why on earth did you not take gloves twice? Oh, God. Not another one. Look. I bought shit gloves, okay? They were shit. They got instantly wet, soddened, covered in shit. They were useless. My hands were just as cold with them on as they were with them off. And they were going to offer no protection from scratches. In fact, they got snagged on everything, 
Okay, so I thought, bare hands, what's wrong with good old bare hands, eh? Unless it's freezing, in which case, yeah, your hands do tend to stop working. But it wasn't that cold, it was about five degrees, which for me, a Brit, is quite warm, to be honest. Look, I'll strike a deal with you, all right? If it, if it makes you, if it's that unbearable for you to, to, to watch me not wearing gloves um, on one of these missions, then I'll, I'll buy some heavy duty, you know, leather, proper, tough gloves. But only if it warrants it. Only if it's cold enough and brutal enough to warrant it. That might be never. At what point did your I don't give a feck kick in? Well, B-Rex, any relation to T? Let me know in the comments. Um, that would have been right about here. Whoops. <laughs> Which were the best parts of the mission that weren't captured on film? Ah, ah, okay, right. Well, apart from the one that I actually did explain uh, in episode three, which was, oh, I was so pissed off that I missed this. GoPro just didn't film. There was a farmer on the same field as me on a quad bike and I dipped down um, so he couldn't see me because I was below the grass line and I just had to wait there. And luckily, he didn't uh, come over to me. He just went horizontal and onto the next field. The other one's quite funny, actually, and I didn't explain this on the trip, so this is new for you guys. Um, the, the first quad bike farmer uh, that I just missed, you remember I, I got off his land onto that little country lane and then he came past. Just after that, he actually came up the road that I was on. I think I was just chilling out, having a, an energy bar at the time, recouping. He came up that road, came past me, there was a dog on his on the back of his quad bike because he's a he's a shepherd he's a, a sheep farmer, and um, he came past and he stopped because I was like all right and stuck my thumb up at him just to be friendly, and he stopped and he just there was an awkward moment where he thought I wanted to say something but I didn't so he just kind of went, so it was an awkward moment it would have been funny to capture on film, but apart from that guys to be honest I filmed everything. And boy, did I find out about that when I came to edit it all. Did you get lonely on your whale's adventure? Other than when you met up with your girlfriend and the odd stranger? Yeah, I, I do get lonely, to be honest. Being out there on your own uh, in, in the cold, wet wilderness, miles from all your friends and family who are nice and warm in their beds, and you're out there cold and wet on your own, you've got no one to share it with. So yeah, I do get lonely in the night times, but I think the next day when you emerge from your tent, the sun's out, you feel, you feel good because you got through it, you got through the night. So uh, yeah, it's a battle, but it's a battle that if you get through, it does wonders for your psyche. How many shits did you take on your mission across Wales? Here we go. It was only a matter of time, wasn't it? Guys, what is with your obsession with shit? Yes, I took shits. In the woods. Have you never done that? It's great. It's so liberating. I had toilet roll. You just do a shit in the wood. It feels great. Get the cold breeze on your ass cheeks. Amazing. I love doing shits outdoors. Always have done, always will. Next. Oh, I didn't answer the question. How many did I do? Corey, I don't know. Three? I, don't, I, I wasn't taking count, mate. Come on. Has the farmer you met at the start got in contact with you? Ah, oh, the lander. I think he was a landowner. He hasn't, Sean, got in contact with me, I'm, I'm afraid to announce. It would be great, wouldn't it, if he'd have got in touch, um, as long as it was in the right circumstances, um, not him demanding that I take it down or he'll have me exiled to Antarctica somehow. I'm sure he's got the power to do that. Um, but <coughs> no. He, I don't know if his circle of friends, his, his social circle, is really a youtube -y circle, really. He might never have even seen it. But if he has, uh, I hope he enjoyed it. Um, and, you know, I hope he had a smile on his face when he, he saw what I went on to achieve. Um, I really do. He's a really nice bloke. If you're watching this, um, sir, 
then uh, I presume you're a sir, um, then you're a great guy, and thanks for being such a good sport. How did your dad react when he found out you lied about bringing a life jacket? Ha! <laughs> Madly enough, he was all right with it after he realised that I was okay. In fact, I posted the episode on my Facebook page, um, as I did with all of them, and I think he actually commented on that one in a typical dad fashion, saying something like, Great episode, Tom, full stop. Really simple dad Facebook speak. And, and I actually replied to his comment saying, Dad, aren't you bothered that I didn't wear a life jacket? And I think he said something like, Oh, well, you'll remember one next time. Which I was quite perplexed at, really, because he can be pretty serious about those things. What was in the mysterious safe? Did you go back to find out? I don't, I don't know, David. I, I genuinely, I was serious about sticking to my line, even off camera. Um, it was a personal challenge as much as anything else. And uh, no, I didn't go over to the mysterious safe. I'll be honest with you, I don't even know if it was a safe. Okay, as I said, it might have been a hunk of metal that dropped out of the sky in World War II. Who knows? So um, if anyone wants to go down there and try and find it, you, you know what my line was. You'll see it in the review video released next week. So by all means, feel free to check it out. I wouldn't recommend it because it's probably not a safe. And even if it was one, good luck getting to it. Would you ever plan on doing a straight line in America? Possibly across a state? Between two Indiana neighbors, police released security footage overnight showing how the argument escalated into a shootout. You hear it? <sighs> nah. Nah. What the hell are hard gums? Uh, hard gums. Here's a picture. I'm curious about the spot in the mountains where you decided to abort your mission. What was your reasoning at the time? Do you regret your decision? Do you feel like if you were well rested and in perfect weather conditions you would have pressed on? Or was the drop simply too steep? I mean, yeah. If it was, let's say, for argument's sake, 11am, it wasn't going to be dark soon. Uh, no need to worry about Joey. Let's say I had phone signal as well. And the visibility was good. It wasn't so wet. And I wasn't hypothermic. I was well rested, as you say. Yeah, I think it was possible. Certainly, perhaps, it, maybe I would have had to scoot round a bit the canyon, the, the ravine. A bit possibly, but yeah, much more possible. That would make a whole lot of difference. But to answer your first half of the question, I mean, do I regret my decision? No, I'm afraid it was a no-brainer. The, the circumstances I was in, uh, it was a no-brainer. I mean, put it this way. At that moment in time, I had three choices. Number one, continue on, somehow getting over or around that ravine uh, and, and onwards into the rocky, treacherous terrain in the dark, which, by the way, is extremely dangerous. I cannot stress that enough, especially in the state I was in. Option two, stay where I was for the entire night, um, have Joey and my family think that I was dead and probably catch pneumonia in the process. Uh, or three, descend from the mountain to safety. So, in the end, it was a no-brainer, but it was just a terrible, you know, terrible shoddy planning. So no, I can't regret that decision because at the end of the day, I'm still here. And that brings us on to Jeremy's question. Do you feel like you accomplished what you set out to do? Cross Wales in a straight line. I mean, if you want a yes or no answer, webman, it would have to be no. I'm afraid. I failed. Some, some people try and make me feel better by saying you didn't. No, you didn't fail. I did. And I'm fine with that because I accomplished so many other things. I, in a way, accomplished more than I thought I would do. I wasn't sure whether this thing would... I thought I might get rumbled really early on. And, you know, I accomplished a lot. I stuck pretty close to the line. 
Um, I did get to the end, just not in one go. I did well. I made more ground than I thought I would, and I did it in style. I can be proud of what I've done, and there's always next time. Do you think achieving a perfect straight line mission, let's say deviation of less than two meters from the line, through any reasonably sized country is possible? Up to which deviation from the route, in meters, would you have still considered the mission across Wales to be successful if you had completed it in one go? Yeah, this is a really good question, because um, we're getting down to the nitty gritty here, really. The What would go down in the record books is that actually an official attempt, if you like, um, and who decides that? If you set yourself a perimeter of <clears throat> 50 meters either side, that's fine, but that would imply that you can constantly do that, which is, I think, shit. I mean, you could be constantly moving around the line, which makes it far less of an achievement. Or you could say you've got to stick to that line at all times, okay? Which, as you say, may or may not be possible. Or you could say, okay, well, you can deviate 50 meters, but only once or twice. So there's so many different ways you could grade it, I think. I think it's definitely possible to do um, a straight line mission across certain countries um, without ever moving uh, more than five meters. I will just say that the, the signal on the GPS system when you're in dense woodland will, will make it impossible to, to not deviate more than two or three or four meters because you'll see on the, the straight line review video that I do, the, the analysis video, that if you stand in a woodland uh, with a dense, you know, thicket of cover over you, you'll move around just by standing still. So the technology restricts you. But yeah, it's up to you. How do you want to grade it, really? So to answer the second half of your question, Mikey, um, would I have considered it a success if I'd have done it all in one go? I would have considered it a success of sorts. Not an ideal, not a perfect success, because I deviated 100 metres one time, about 60 metres another time but it would have been a far greater success, uh, immeasurably better than what I did do, because I didn't even get across the country in one go. So yes, I would have considered it a big success, but not a perfect one, um, and one that could be beaten um, by an infinity amount, if you think about it. So a uh, very good question. Is this what you mostly will be doing now for your channel? Well, you'll be pleased to know. I will be doing more straight line missions. Um, I'll be doing other stuff too. Um, adventures. GeoGuessr will be ticking along once a week. Uh, the, there'll, there'll be lots of different things, real life GeoGuessr, other challenges that I'm going to set myself. But of course, I'm going to do more straight line missions, um, whether it be in Wales or other countries. They have to be filmed in the winter, bear in mind, unless I went to the Southern Hemisphere. Who knows? If you are planning to do more straight line missions, in what countries would you do it? Yeah, I mean, it's no secret that Wales has still yet to be done. Scotland and England are doable. And there are a few countries in Europe as well that I've got my eye on, but I'm not going to give away any more than that, guys. And on that note, by the way, if any of you um, happen to feel like scouring Google Earth to come up with ideas for me, straight line ideas <clears throat> for cities, counties, countries, states, uh, areas, um, then please fire them my way if you think they're real peaches. Uh, email me the ideas because I'm always looking out for new ideas, of course. Did you ever expect the Wales mission to blow up as much as it did? Not like it did. Not like it did. Um, the optimistic person in me um, was confident, was like, yeah, I think I can get, you know, maybe a million views uh, ever. <laughs> uh, but... Even that person, the optimistic person, was expecting a bit of a backlash in terms of a lot of people going, I don't like this, I don't get this, this isn't what I want to watch. But I didn't really read any of that in the first wave, the first big boom. It was all positive and I was blown away. And I just, I just want to thank everyone again and again and again for the reaction and the response and just all the love that I got. And I think I still probably take it all for granted. It's been incredible. Do you think that your accent is the key to your success? <laughs> You're joking, aren't you? 
No, I'm afraid the um, West Midlands accent has done nothing but hold people back. In fact, I can't think of any. Yeah. No. Let's move on. When were you closest to death throughout all your adventures? Um, there was a time when I cycled from London to Budapest. And um, on the very first day, I went from London to Dover. And I ended up um, through, again, bad planning. But I ended up on the motorway that leads into Dover, um, which is chock a block with lorries by the way as you can imagine because it's the main port to france there was no hard shoulder it was getting dark it was pretty much dark i had no helmet no lights and there was water all over the road so you can just imagine the lorries were whooshing past blasting their horn at me as I, as as they went by um it was ridiculous I, I don't know if I was close to death, but that was definitely one of the most scared I've been. What is your most fun or crazy adventure from your childhood with Greg? Oh, God. The, honestly, there's too many. There's so many where we were just hiding from farmers. I remember hiding in a big pipe with a farmer walking around, never saw us. There was one where we missioned our way across a really fancy golf course. And we were hiding. You know, we, the, the mission was not to be seen, but get right across this golf course, dressed in like filthy, covered in mud and tracky bottoms and jumpers. And I remember hiding on the edge of one of the greens. This will infuriate any golfers. And there was two blokes coming down, well-to-do chaps, you know, talking. I remember they were talking about their, well, my daughter's at Worcester Uni at the moment. She's studying law. And um, he had a shot and it bounced on the green and rolled down the bank right by where we were. And we went out and grabbed the ball and went back in and hid in the bushes. And the two guys came down and they were like, well, where's that gone? I'm sure it didn't go that far. And they started rummaging in the bushes right where we were. And we were just, we covered ourselves up like this, covered ourselves in leaves and brambles and stinging nettles. And we, the guy's feet were right there. And he was stood there for what seemed like an eternity. Whether he saw us, and decided to, to just walk away, or whether he don't, I, I've got a feeling he didn't see us, which is just incredible. Um, and then we ended up, we, we carried on, and we ended up that day in the sauna of the clubhouse and the swimming pool. We somehow snuck in. That was hilarious. There was another time we actually snuck in to Drayton Manor theme park, one of the biggest theme parks in Britain. We, we somehow snuck in by wading up this brook this small river climbing through a pipe and we popped out in the zoo for drayton manor theme park luckily not in the lion enclosure but but we popped out in the zoo a member of staff saw us emerging from the bushes and she questioned what we were doing and we were just like ah oh, we've got bored of all the rides now we're just kind of exploring this area she was like okay she walkie talkied the security we changed our clothes into different colours and disappeared into the crowds. We went on a ride called Splash Canyon, uh, which is like a water rapids ride. And when we got off that, they, we saw security everywhere looking for us. They were like radioing each other, looking everywhere for a boy in a blue shirt, I guess, or two boys in blue and white, but we changed our tops. So we went on a couple more rides and then we just, we got out of there because it was getting too hot. What are your opinions on freight train hopping? Are those cool adventures or are they stupendously dangerous, or both? Would you even do it yourself? Ah, oh, freight hopping does look sick, to be honest. Um, I've thought about doing it this summer, to be honest with you, with Greg. But Greg made a good point. He was like, I mean, for a start, for a start, I'd get demonetized, possibly arrested, fined, and um, probably wouldn't be able to travel around a lot of Europe, especially when we leave Europe. And the same goes for Greg. He's he's He wants to have a career in climate change. I mean, that wouldn't work, would it? If you couldn't travel to any countries. No, it's too hot. It's too naughty. Do you like to explore lost places? Uh, do I like to explore lost places? Yes. I love abandoned places. 
Are we ever going to see straight line challenges through a city? Probably need to use parkour, cut through buildings, etc. Yes, no doubt. If you had to pick, which is your favorite country and why is it not Germany? Who says it's not Germany? No, it's not. Um, too many countries to pick. Not enough time to think about it. I love lots of countries. I love Austria. Ananas in pizza, yay or nay? Ananas in pizza, I presume you mean pineapple. Luckily, I know all the German words for all the food because I worked in a supermarket in Austria. Uh, yay or nay? Yay! Okay, pineapple and ham is a good combination. Any chef will tell you that. The, the, the sweetness of the pineapple complements the saltiness of the ham. And it also does not clash with the cheese, the tomato, the bread. It's a good combination, okay? If you don't like it, that's fine. But just because you haven't opened your tiny minds to the idea of ham and pineapple doesn't mean that you have the right to criticize and ridicule those that have. What was the single best and worst part of the mission across Wales? The worst part for me um, was a period around the time that I cut my, fin cut my hand, uh, but it wasn't really to do with that at all, to be honest. It was just being soaking wet, shivering cold, faced with the prospect of camping out for three more nights, okay? That night, I know I slept in Verity's car in the end, but I didn't know this at the time when I was feeling really low. Um, the idea of just being cold, wet, having to somehow dry off in your tent, being alone, having to put those wet clothes on back in the morning if I couldn't dry them on a fire, which was very probable, having the lake still to do, having the mountain still to do, um, those are the worst parts because it's a mental battle. The best part, on the flip side, and this is what was so amazing, was the next day. The sun's out, the weather's on your side, you're making good progress, and your spirits are just so high because you've proven to yourself what you're made of, the resilience, the guts, the determination. And you've, you've proved to yourself what you're made of. You don't necessarily know that until you do it. And you have this feeling of, oh, just pride and you can just relax and you're just comfortable and you feel alive. Those are the highest moments. And those are the highest moments you'll ever get in your life. Because you suddenly realize in those moments, you don't have to be depressed and your life doesn't have to have no meaning or no direction. Because that's how you get it. That's how you get meaning into your life, um, by overcoming obstacles. And that brings us on to brother's question. Can you give me a solid advice? in general, about life. Paul asked. Get yourself out there. Go on adventures. Set yourself challenges, big ones, okay? Um, put yourself out of your comfort zone, for God's sake. Um, for some of you, that might mean go on a seven-day grueling hike or a bike ride. For some of you, that might simply mean go to a party and socialize with people that you don't know. That might be equally as scary for you. Whatever it may be that, that kind of scares you, but that deep down you, you know you probably should do it, just do it. Don't skirt round it, okay? Don't do the easy thing. Don't cop out because you'll get into a habit of doing that. And equally, you'll get into a habit of doing things if you do do them. And I cannot tell you how valuable that is. So don't do the easy thing. Don't stay indoors playing games or watching YouTube watch a bit of YouTube, but you know, don't do it all the time because that's a real sure way to, to just feel empty and depressed and worthless. Um, and I've been there, you know, get out there, do what you love doing, get some meaning into your life and the rest will follow. And that is me done, everyone. I sincerely hope I have succeeded in quenching your thirst for knowledge. Sorry I couldn't answer all your questions, it's just impossible. Hope you enjoyed and uh, I'll see you for the line analysis video. And don't forget on Patreon I am churning out behind the scenes footage, bonus footage and also giving you the uh, benefit of viewing all of my big releases before anyone else, early access. It's a dollar a month if you want to sign up. Unfortunately the money I get from the ad revenue on YouTube just isn't enough so I would appreciate if you can spare a dollar a month. Give back to Tommy Boy and keep this channel 
flourishing. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching everyone. See you soon.